Good afternoon, this is Nicholas from Gandora Gaming. I bring you guys my Valiant's deck profile, post Dark Green Blast 2022. And yeah, this deck's gonna get so much more support. Uh, same thing with Runic. Uh, both archetypes are just getting one wave of support every new set, apparently. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited to go into this. So uh, if you don't know Valiant's, they're the Pendulum archetype that's been eclipsed by the new Draco Pal archetype, which just retrains of all the true Drake goes. But uh, I still feel like this deck was really, really cool. And uh, yeah, let's just go straight into this. So first things first, uh, for Valiant's monsters, we play one Hugo, the Valiant Warrior. Now, Hujo or Hugo, or how you want to pronounce it, I think it's Hujo, because it's a J. But uh, this guy is pretty cool. He's your boss monster, even though he's only 1900 attack. Uh, but he's actually your fusion card. So what basically what he does is that in the Pendulum scale, Basically, he has the effect, if Valiant's World, which is a field spell, is on the field, and you control Water Monster, you're supposed to summon this card for your main monster zone in the same column. So basically saying, when this guy's in a Pendulum Scale and you have the field spell up, you're just supposed to summon onto the field into that direct zone. That's basically what his Pendulum Zone does, and it's pretty, pretty solid. He also has the effect where you can target one face-up card in either player's spell or trap zone, or return it to the hand, and if this monster moves... To another main monster zone, except during the damage step, you can fuse someone one Valiant's monster from your extra deck using uh, Valiant's monsters from your extra deck, uh, hand, field, or pendulum zone as material. Uh, really, really, really powerful card. It's a one card fusion summon, and uh, yeah, he gets you into your big guys. Really, really cool card, and I can't wait to keep on going. Next, we play three Nazdu, the Valiant's Ninja. Uh, this guy is our Ikoski of the group. He is our Sasuke. He is our ninja boy. He is our main man himself. This guy is pretty cool. So he's a scale one, same as the last one. Actually, here's the funny thing with all the Valiants. Most of them, if not all of them, are scale ones. Which is like, how do you play the deck if they're all scale ones? Oh, we'll get into that. But first things first, Natsu the ninja basically has the effect where he, you have the field spell up of the shimmering bra uh, bamboo. Or Beshudo, my apologies. Basically, you spell summon him into the main monster zone in the same column. So, the same mechanic moves himself into the mechanic. But then, his monster effect is you can target one other monster in the main monster zone and then move it horizontally to another monster zone. And if this card targets one Valiant's monster in a spell and trap zone, you can spell summon it to your main monster zone in the same column. So, it just helps get your guys into the play. Because the whole idea of this deck is that you want to special summon them from the spawn zones, which in this case are the pendulum scales, and then move them across the field in order to get really, really cool effects. So he's a must of three of, not to mention he doesn't have bad stats either. 1800, 1800 is not bad, plus he's a one, level one scale. Uh, next, we have Salon, the Valiant Archer. Now, this guy is funny as hell because he's a flip a coin mechanic. But um, basically, like I said, all the main monsters have the effect. Well, basically, uh, you can spell summon this guy from your main monster zone to the uh, same column. So again, spell summon himself to the pendulum scale, and then you can move him around, which is fantastic. And then he has the effect where basically, uh, if you control a spell summon card, you can target one effect monster on the field, toss a coin, heads or tails, heads negate the effect, or if the result is tails, have its attack. And if the monsters, if this card moves in a monster zone, you can target one card on the field, toss a coin. Results heads destroy it. Results tails return to hand. This guy's the goofiest motherfucker. And uh, the best part is, actually, I think the worst part is that he locks you into non valiant monsters in the main deck. So there, the whole restriction with, with these guys is that you are locked into valiants from the main deck, not the extra deck. You can access anything from the extra deck, but from the main deck, you're locked into valiants. So this is a highly pure archetype, which is kind of funny. But, uh, yeah, he tossed coins, heads or tails of it. Uh, I wish it was just a guarantee one, but, hey, we're not playing coin toss. And uh, that is it for our Samurai, man. And then, finally, for our last of the Water Valiants, we have uh, Sigamore. I feel like I mispronounce these guys. The more and more I actually say them. Uh, Shinomore, the Valiant Princess. Now, this card is actually the best one. So, she has the effect, like all the other ones, where she's both some of herself into the main monster zone, into the same column. Also, you can, she does give you the restriction that you can't spell summon Valiants, except Valiants from the main deck. 
and then it has the effect where during the main phase, if you control a special summon, if, you, if this card you control a special summon, add one valiant spell or trap directly from your deck to hand, which is fantastic. And then if this card moves into another main monster zone, you add a valiant monster from your deck to hand. Go we'll use each effect once per turn. So she's amazing because she's double, double everything. Not only is she a free summon, then she moves herself to then get a uh, monster, and when she's summoned, she gets a spell. Really, really great monster, and it's a must of three of in the deck. That is it for our Water Valiants. Now let's talk about our Fire Valiants. So all the Water Valiants are Spellcaster Waters. All our Fires are Machines. And uh, they're basically the polar opposites, but Machine versions. Uh, it's really, really cool. There's a whole split mechanic. It's kind of like Fluffles and the Edgems, where like half, like majority of the engine is Fluffle, but they have Edgems which are still the same archetype, it just, they're split, you know what I mean? Well, these guys are the Fire Machine Valiants, and they're pretty sick. So, uh, first things first, we have Valiants, Dominator, Duke, and, uh, like, the same effect. Basically, unlike the other one, they require a different field spell to be on the field. But, uh, or if you control a Fire Monster, I forgot to mention that. If you control Water, these guys can spell some, some, uh, spell some of themselves anyway. He requires a Fire on field, and, um, also the field spell. One or the other, basically. And he does a free summon on the field, level 1, scale. And then he has the effect where basically, you can target one set card, spell a trap, and basically can't be activated this turn, which is fantastic. So it's kind of like the, um, what's that field spell that's like, god, a trick star field spell, light stage. It has like a light stage effect where it just targets his back row and says, you cannot activate it this turn, which is pretty solid. And then it has the effect, if this card in the main monster zone moves to an adjacent monster zone, you will target one face of monster your opponent controls, and take control of that face of monster, but it can't declare attacks, nor activate its effects. Also, it's treated as a Valiant monster, so it's just a snatch deal. It just steals monsters, which is great. I wish you could attack that monster, but hey, what can you do? And then now we go on to our three ofs. Valiant, Mad, Mask, uh, Masquerade. Uh, you know, if, it, I feel like I want to say Masquerade, but it's not Masquerade because it's Masker Us, Masquerus. I don't know. I might be mispronouncing all these names, but you're going to have to bear with me. Now, this guy is our other funny guy because you know how this guy was flipping coins? Well, this guy's rolling dice. Yeah, this guy's a roll of dice guy. So he has the same effect where basically you spell some of them into the main monster zone so if you control fire or the field spell. And then basically as effect that during the main phase, you can roll a six-sided die, excavate that many cards from the top of your deck for as many as you can. And then you do add one excavated Valiance monster from your deck to your hand. And then he has another effect where you can roll a six-sided die, two, three, four, and five special summon monsters from your spell and trap zone to the field crazy crazy dude he just like hey we're gonna roll dice today this is the definition of modern uh dice mechanics really really interesting and i really like them uh next we have three uh viscount or voltage viscount uh this is a pretty interesting dude so he has the effect where basically free summon on the field from the pendulum scale into the adjacent column and then he has the effect when during the main phase if you control this special monster place one Face of Valiant's Pendulum Monster from your extra deck, then a Face of Spell and Trap Zone as a continuous spell. And then if this card in the main monster zone moves to another monster zone, you can place one Valiant's Pendulum Monster from your extra deck to the Pendulum Zone. Basically saying, hey, we also move our guys from the extra deck into the Pendulum Scale so they can freely summon themselves out without us having the Pendulum Summon. As you can see, this is a Pendulum archetype. But all these damn fucks are one scales. So again, how are we pendulum summoning? Well, we don't. They all have the effect of spam themselves onto the board. And they just keep moving themselves. Really, really cool mechanic. And I really like it. Uh, for our final Valiant's monster, we're playing three Valiant's Buster Baron. Uh, this guy is fantastic. Again, he's a free summon. He does lock you into Valiant's, which is fine. Well, for the main deck. And then he has the effect, if you control this special summon card, you can target one of our Valiant's monster in the main monster zone. And then you move it to a horizontal zone, which is great. And then if this monster moves to another main monster zone, you can target one card in either player's pendulum zone, place it face up in the adjacent spell and trap zone as continuous spell. 
So basically what this card is saying is that uh, it basically just a free summon from the Pendulum Zone, which is fantastic. Or it just puts them into the Spell and Trap Zone, which is quite interesting. Really, really interesting card. And right, now we talk about our other monsters that aren't Valiants. Because I can see none of his stuff is new so far. This is basically word for word our last deck profile. I think the only thing different is I was playing two of him and maybe two of him and now they're one ofs. But that's really about it. Everyone else is still three of. And uh, yeah, I still really think that these ratios are good. Until we get more Valiant main deck monsters so that we can switch out some of them, you still gotta play three, 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 three. Um, we're also playing three Chronograph Sorcerer because Chronograph Sorcerer is an eight scale. Not to mention, he gets yourself a Time Gazer, and Time Gazer is just fantastic. Uh, another card that's really, really great in this deck is Abyss Actor Curtain Razor. Uh, why is Curtain Razor so good? Well, he's a Pendulum that once per duel, so as it summons itself from the uh, Pendulum scale. Meaning, hey, he's a free level 4 extension that uh, does what all the Valiants do when he spends some of themselves from the Pendulum scales. Really, really cool card. And then finally, our two Spirit Monsters. Uh... Karate Kido of the Spirit and Kudo uh, Oberon Karate Spirit. The reason why these guys are so great is that not only do they, uh, they're spirit monsters, because we don't want monsters clogging up our uh, spell and trap zones, our pendulum scales. If we had monsters clogging up our pendulum scales, then we're kind of screwed because those are our spawn points. We want those open so that we keep summoning out monsters. So Kuria Orbio Karate Spirit and Kurio. Uh, the other spirit basically says, hey, put us in a scale of pendulum summon, and then we just add ourselves back so you keep summoning. Really, really fantastic cards. You're never really summoning these dudes, but hey, they don't have bad normal effects either. And uh, that's it for the uh, spirit monsters. That's it for the pendulum monsters in general. Our final monster we do play is one, Cyrus Stein, just because it's a really, really strong monster. And it's searchable. That's basically it. It's searchable, and we can just pay 5000 summon out an interior exterior, and push for game, which is fantastic. Now let's go on to our spells and traps. Ooh, I did want to mention one more Darkwing Blast card, because this is probably the only video I'll ever have this card in. This guy is not a bad substitute for these two. Uh, this guy is actually pretty sick. He's a new uh, spirit card that we got in Darkwing Blast, and uh, he's pretty sick, actually. Basically, again, he has the uh, he's a level nine scale that uh, puts himself in the pendulum scale. When you pendulum something, goes back to the hand, which is great. Uh, and his main monster fact is that not that bad either. Uh, when this card is normal summon, uh, you return all cards you you control in the same column as this card in the pendulum scale to the hand, which is pretty sick actually. And then of course he has the effect where you can add one 2400 attack and a thousand defense monster from your deck to your hand. Which, funny enough, are these guys. So honestly, I kind of do want to put them in the deck. And I'll probably take out a Time Gazer for it, honestly. So if you want, you can probably put this guy in for that. And then we have three Spirit Monsters. And these are just our level 9 scales. Plus, because just for the fact that if you do summon him, he will search out these two. Which is pretty solid. <laughs> but uh, that's it for the monsters. Let's just go straight into the spells and traps. I just felt like I needed to mention him. Because he is a really cool support card. That no one's even, he's just fodder. He's just pack filler for most people. I do see him having potential in this deck. So, this one I felt like I wanted to mention that. Okay, so now it's time to talk about one of the most complicated cards. And one of the coolest mechanics in Yu-Gi-Oh! Valiant's World Field Spells. Uh, there's two in the archetype and they both are pretty interesting. First things first, we have Valiant's World Kong Wizen. And we also have Valiant's World Shinibu Basco. So, if you remember... Uh, our water pendulums either require water on a field or this field spell to be on field in order to spell some of themselves. While the fire pendulums require either a fire on field or a Valiant's World Kong Wizen to be on the field. So these cards are very, very important for the archetype. And they both have really, really interesting effects. So basically the whole mechanic of these field spells is that they're the win condition given to this archetype. For moving monsters in the main monster zone into other zones. So you're probably wondering, why is this deck, like whole mechanic, moving dudes around? So they like start here, they go here, and then they move around. Like, what's the point of this? Well, the field spells are the answer to this. So when you activate one of the field spells, you immediately give your opponent the other one. And then they both have recipro uh, reciprocal effects. Basically meaning 
that they both are, can be activated for both players doing that effect, which is pretty funny. So basically, let's say I summon out Valiance, I move it, I move it to the zone. He summons a different monster. Let's just use this uh, Baron de Fleur over here. He summons a Baron de Fleur. He for some reason doesn't banish my dude, right? Uh, my turn goes around. I move the effect to move him into the zone a retrospective monster is in. Well, because of this field spell, basically we have the effect where basically we could use one monster in your opponent's monster zone in the adjacent column and then put that monster into their spell and trap zone, which is hilarious. So basically saying, let's say the opponent has an established board and you dark ruler them and you have both field spells established. If you move one of your valiants every like step of the way, you're gonna push every monster they have into the spell and trap zone. A very, very funny mechanic. And it is uh, really, really funny. Now this guy has a different effect where basically uh, it has the opposite effect where you can target one of the monster in your opponent's, uh, in your own spell and trap zone and spell someone into the main monster zone. So it doesn't really matter which one you give because they're reciprocal, I believe. At least that's how I was taught. I could be mistaken, you might only want this one. But, to my knowledge, it doesn't matter which field spell you get, because no matter what, you're moving it into the zone, and they trigger both ways. So, it's a pretty, pretty cool, interesting mechanic. And uh, you just want to push your opponent's big-ass monsters into the spell and trap zone, so they can never be used again. Which is fantastic, because not only are you stopping their monsters by non-targeting remove them, but you're making them spells and traps because it clogs up their spell and trap zone. Which is pretty interesting. Really, really cool mechanic. And uh, yeah, let's just go straight into the remaining spells. So again, we do play two of this field spell and two of the other field spell. Just because it is a solid card. And overall, it's just pretty fantastic. Now let's go over our other cards. Uh, first things first, we still are playing three Valiant's place at the beginning. Now I've seen a lot of people cut this card down to one. I can definitely see that. But personally, I just really like this card for the simple fact that basically it adds one Valiant Field Spell from your deck to your hand. Just for the simple fact it adds a Valiant Field Spell means it's a plus two because this is going to add that and then this is going to add that or other vice versa, which is pretty fantastic. And then it has the effect where you could destroy one Pedro module you control and if you do add one Senate Switch from your deck to your hand. I mean, if this card is in your graveyard except the turn of sent there, you can banish this card, place one Valiant Pendulum Monster from your extra deck to the Pendulum Scale, which is pretty, pretty interesting. So basically what this card is saying is that, hey, we're going to add a Synod Switch, which if you've never read, this whole archetype is based off this card right here, uh, Synod Switch. What Synod Switch says, once per turn, you can target one monster in your main monster zone and then choose to move it to an adjacent unused zone. That's all this card does. So basically what this card says, hey, you're getting your field spell, and hey, you're getting a Synod Switch, in order to move your opponent's monsters. And then, hey, the next turn, you can banish this card to then get a Pendulum monster in your Pendulum uh, zone. Not your Pendulum scale. Uh, your extra deck zone. And put it in the main monster zone so you can summon it out. Which is pretty fantastic. I really like this card. That's why it's still a 3 of in my deck. But I can definitely see you cutting it down to 2 to 1. Really, really good card overall. And then finally, for our last spell and trap. And the last card in deck. The newest card that we got from... Uh, uh, Darkwing Blast, which is Valiant's Awakening the Solo Activation. This card is fantastic for the archetype. So basically it has the effect where you can place one Valiant's Pendulum Monster from your deck into the Pendulum Scale. It's Rhoda, but better. It just skips a step. It doesn't, you can't access this card because it's placing it into the Pendulum Scale. Meaning you easily have it never access to the Blue Girl, allowing you to pop off, which is fantastic. And then it has the effect, it, this card is in a field zone, basically saying, if you have a field zone or your opponent has a field zone, you know, banish this card from your graveyard, target one Valiant monster in the main monster zone, and then move it. Fantastic effect. Not only is it saying, hey, we're getting a free adding of whatever we want from deck, non, we're, we're replacing it, we're not adding it, plus they can't ash us. So we're just free getting blue girl. But, uh, yeah, no, Soul Activation is nuts. This card is just amazing. It also helps us move zones, which is fantastic. And that is it for our spells. This deck is very monster heavy because all the monsters are spells themselves. Anyway, I hope you all enjoy. 
Let's go straight into the All right, track. so now it's time to talk about our boss monsters. So first things first, we have our cover art for Tactical Masters, which is Maya Koki, the Valiants United. It has all the Valiants, the main heroes, besides the uh, ninja one for some reason, all together. And they're here to fight the day and really kick some ass. So this card is a phenomenal boss monster. I The only issue with this card is literally the fact that it requires... Three Valiant monsters to make, which in a Pendulum deck that isn't really gaining too much advantage every turn. Well, it is, but not in a sense of like every Pendulum deck. For example, the new Pendulum archetype that we have really loses the Droll, that new uh, Perform Pound deck, which I'll be doing deck profiles of soon. Um, that deck loses the Droll because it searches like with every card. Valiant don't really do that, so have, requiring three is a high cost, but I do understand why. Because this guy is such a recurrable boss monster. Once you make him, if you don't die that next turn, which he might, uh, basically he's just a house. So he's a quick effect. Put a monster in your opponent's main monster zone into the spell and trap zone. And then when this card is destroyed, put him into the pendulum zone. And then his effect is you can spell someone back onto the main monster zone. Yes, he just keeps going, ladies and gentlemen. He is a phenomenal boss monster, and he's a scale 10. All our pendulums are scale 10, meaning we can actually perform a pendulum summon with this guy, which is pretty insane. Uh, again, if he was just two materials, this guy would be the nuts. But he's three materials, making him a little harder to make, but he is still a really, really powerful boss monster, and overall essential for the deck. Uh, another pendulum we have is Valiant's <laughs> Genesis Grand Duke. This guy's the machine uh, win uh, winner. Uh, he's a really, really great effect as well. Where basically, yeah, you can spell summon his card from the pendulum scale, which is great. And then, of course, he has the effect where he can move zones, which is great, just like he can. They both have that same effect as their pendulum scale. But then he has the effect when on field, if this card is face down in your extra deck, um, if, oh yeah, let me just rephrase all of this. He basically has the effect that if this face down card is in your extra deck, must be either fusion summon or special summon by tributing a level 5 or higher non fusion valiance monster in the column of the extra deck monster zone. And if this card is special summon, you can target one monster in your opponent's spell and trap zone return to hand. So basically, his effect is he's a contact fusion. Also, you can fusion summon him with the big guy. And basically, he has the effect where you just push a monster from their spell and trap zone back to the hand which is pretty sick uh, i really like him but overall he's just a too easy summon 2500 scale 10. that's really all he is and uh, he's not bad of course we do still have the cherry exterior because the jury exterior is our amazing card that we summon off cyberstein pay thousand light points no spell and traps for the remainder of the duel unless we cannot respond to him like a dark ruler or a forbidden drop but uh yeah, no, this card's nuts. Or oh, I guess Super Poly too. Three really, really annoying cards. But other than that, Exterior is really stopping you. And then now we talk about our links, which we are playing one Under Goddess, one Appaloosa, the one Unicorn, all three that can be summoned off IP Masquerina, and then Beyond the Pendulum, which is a fantastic card for this deck. Uh, if you want, you can definitely play two Beyond Pendulums and honestly take out the Nightmare Unicorn. But for this build, I decided to put in just the one, just so we had more space in the extra, which is fantastic. Uh, Beyond the Pendulum is a really, really broken card from Dimension Force, and I highly recommend it. Really, really powerful card. Uh, we also got the one Zeus, the one uh, Drill Driver Zesperado, because, hey, Zeus plus material is great. Uh, Babuska for Plan B, Abyss Driller for those pesky tier element players, and uh, then a card to search. Cyberstein because Gear Gigan X can search any level 4 lower machine, including Cyberstein. Also, can search any of your level 4 lower pendulums that are machines, which there are like two of them. So, that ain't bad either. Anyway, I hope you all enjoy. Take care. Don't do anything stupid. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a runic deck profile tomorrow. I'm debating if I do a update on the runic uh, masquerade, not masquerade, uh, magical musketeer deck. Or I would do Runic Splite. But personally, I'd probably do Runic Mas uh, Magical Musketeer because I did add some new cards from the Megatons. And I can't wait to show you that. So uh, let's just go. You all have a good one. And take care. <laughs>